I think I actually still get more emails about the artwork on my wall than I do about what I said in the interview. So that was fantastic artwork. You collect santeros. Correct. Yeah, a lot of lot of New Mexican folk art and folk art from around the country and around the world. Anyway, it's it's an honor to be sitting with you doing this interview. Bridget, uh, you're a big fan of this man too. I am a huge fan of Kirk Ellis for a bunch of reasons. <laughs> John Adams is one of the best uh, works on television that I've ever seen. Well, thank you for that. And really fine. And we're of course very proud that you are in New Mexico resident. Uh, you are someone that travels around the world and you come back to New Mexico and we can claim you as one of our own. Um, you, uh, amongst other things, uh, you also sat on a panel uh, here at the film festival. One of the things that we're talking about at the festival is it's a film festival, but that is actually kind of a misnomer these days because there's more than film in New Mexico. Right, right. We never actually we never actually touched on, on on the actual subject of the panel, which was about that disparity between film and TV. Uh, the governor's office is prone to spit out quite a few press releases regarding feature films, but one of the things that goes uh, unrecognized here, I think, largely, is, is that we do have a significant uh, base of production that is television series, whether it's Breaking Bad or In Plain Sight. Uh, or wildfire, the crash. D uh, crash as well. Yeah, crash as well. I was on a panel with the showrunner for Crash, and that's very steady work. It's very regular work, and it keeps coming back here, which says a lot for our production infrastructure. Indeed, you know. indeed, and all of the the incredible economic impact that the television series really have, where you've got people in hotels and catering and all that kind of thing for weeks at a time. Well, it's months actually. You're talking about the average show. Those are all 13 episode shows, and that's a a good six months. You know, between prep and shoot and rap exactly one thing that uh, came through uh, uh, as always from your participation on the panel besides your love of throwing in devilish little remarks <laughs> is, that, is 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 what a political uh, you know you're activist in terms of the union you said that uh, variety or Hollywood reporter described you as a left-wing holdout on correct, the correct. writers so, so, strike. I'm, 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 I'm proudly proudly described in variety as a left-wing holdout on the last writer strike I think there were about 289 of us who didn't want to end the strike when the guild told us to uh, because I thought it hadn't gone long enough if we pushed it into the Oscars I think we would have gotten a better shake as it is we got a, a decent deal and we got things like webisodes covered that weren't covered before uh, but uh, but no I, I you know I mean it's I, I've been lucky and I've been I've been blessed in the industry to have con consistent work you know even in a down in the economy and I think it's important that we we all take a stand on what's important to us about our work and about our industry and, and, and another thing I wanted to mention that came up is that as always you're very active in trying to get film and TV going in New Mexico, the political behind-the-scenes work the, with regard to the uh, funding programs mm -hmm. and so on, the incentive programs. And as a matter of fact, you said this morning that you have been active with trying to get the fund to apply more to independent films, locally produced films. And I know that our producer of this webisode, uh, this webcast, Kenneth Knoll, you must know him because he's right. a big advocate for that too. Well, I mean, we can't. I mean, under under the current under the current terms of the incentive and the rebate program, we really can't promote and grow a local New Mexico industry because it's designed as a service industry to bring larger scale productions into the state and that's a good thing it employs a lot of people and we've trained a lot of people when I did Into the West here we shot the last three episodes of Into the West in New Mexico there were maybe two crews that you could field and now we can successfully field a half dozen good crews you mean uh, from New Mexico from New Mexico right. from New Mexico what we need to do is we need to create an alternative fund that's not controlled by the state investment council um, that can be administered by an organization like the Film Board of Canada, whether that's administered by the New Mexico Film Office or a different panel, you know, needs to be determined. We were very close to getting that through the legislature two years ago, but unfortunately with the downturn, it may be several years before we can reintroduce that legislation. Well, festivals are always important as networking places for people who are working outside the mainstream, who can't really get that $100 million deal. Um, and even though this is a scale-back festival, I must say, as I look around the room, um, it does look pretty busy. Um, and new media is very much on everybody's mind. I was asked today as part of the panel about the nature of webisodes and the future of that. And that's, that's very clearly an arena in which many more filmmakers are uh, uh, intending to participate. Short web episodes. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, I just want to mention a few of your other uh, awards. 13 Emmys, 4 Go Golden Globes. Uh, the Humanitas Prize, I'm not sure what that related to, but uh, I, I happen to s have seen your um, uh, Anne Frank oh, yes. project, yep. and I appreciate that. 
Yeah, that was, well, I mean, I've been lucky in my career to work on projects that I really care about deeply uh, that do seem to have some afterlife beyond their air date, both Anne Frank um, and, <laughs> excuse me, I love, doing, I love that on live television. Um, the, um, uh, both Anne Frank and John Adams have had an afterlife in schools. Uh, John Adams is now being used in about 12,000 school districts wow. to teach uh, junior high and high school students about the founding era of this country. And that's, for all the awards that we got, it's all been very nice and looks good on the shelf, but knowing that they'll be around long after their creators have departed is a, is a satisfying feeling. I, I, don't know what, I don't know what more to ask you about or what more to say, except, uh, again, that it's an honor to um, uh, know you and to have you around Santa Fe and have you plugging the local industry and participating in it, as well as going to... Uh, you work, by the way, uh, Kirk works with an old friend of mine, a guy I knew from the music industry when Gary I was in Getzman L.A. Of about Pictures, yeah. Gary Gary Getzman of Playtone Pictures, um, Tom Hanks's partner. I knew Gary uh, back before I had any interest in film, or, and maybe before he had any interest in film. I don't know. No, he was a child actor, right? That's correct. That's anyway, right. um, uh, 30 years ago in L.A., we were both in the music business. Well, this is a great place to work. I mean, I've, I've been here 11 years now full time. I grew up in West Texas. I traveled here quite frequently. I always knew it was a place that I'd end up eventually. Uh, best move I ever made creatively. I've done all my best work here. And I think that if I, you know, wake up one morning and can't feel inspired to work, it's probably time for me to start valet parking cars at Geronimo. By the way, uh, Gary Getzman, I didn't mean to be just purely name dropping, but it was that company that yeah. did the yeah. John yeah. Adams Gary, Gary, Gary yeah. Getzman was uh, uh, Jonathan Demme's partner for a long time on projects like Philadelphia, which is how he met Tom Hanks. Right. And then they, they began business together on a movie called um, that, that Thing You Do, Tom Hanks's first effort. In fact, Playtime was created to make one film, and that film was um, Where the Wild Things Are. And it took so long to make that they've, they've made a ton of great pictures before. Did they ever do a, Where the Wild Things yes, Are? Yes, which, which is out in theaters now. Oh, that's the with one that's Spike out. Jones, and, and they're, they're still listed as executive producers on it. He asked me for a jingle uh, for that uh, song for that show, which I guess didn't make it. Or I would have heard about it by now. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd, 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 I'd check your mailbox. Okay. Um, I, was just, I, was just going through, I was just going through my own, my own past credit list, and you're right about that. I never really thought of it that way. I am the only person whose resume includes bio biographies of both Anne Frank and the Three Stooges. I can tell you that. Well, I, I started my writing career as a reporter for the L.A. Times, the Hollywood Reporter in uh, Los Angeles. I worked in England for a couple of years. And uh, so I, I, come at, I come at screenwriting from that point of view. And I early on developed this sense that you had a responsibility um, as well as a privilege to do the kind of work that we do as creators for film. And I've been lucky in the projects that I've managed to gather. Uh, that they've all been subjects that I've been fascinated by uh, that have had, fortunately, some interest to the general audience. Well, you have to have a lot of commitment and you have to have a lot of passion for what you do because the road uh, is paved with anything but good intentions. It's paved with a lot of obstacles. Uh, and you have to have a really thick skin and a lot of guts and a lot of heart to actually overleap those obstructions and get your, your film made. Yes. Yeah, so I have a lot of respect for, for independent filmmakers. And it's tough. I mean, our, our setup isn't designed here in New Mexico to engender those kinds of productions, which is why we need this sort of alternative stream of revenue uh, to help grow our industry. One of the things I've been saying for years is that um, somebody else is going to come up with a better tax incentive, a better rebate, um, a better, a better tax-free loan. Uh, and what keeps an industry going is that group of people, both above and below the line, who are able to sustain an industry with homegrown product. I was actually born in East Texas. I was born in a place called Orange, which is so far east, it's practically in Louisiana. But I grew up at the far end of the state in El Paso. Oh, I had no yeah, idea. That's where I went to elementary school, six years of Catholic education. Yeah, I had a, uh, our religion teacher who was the priest in the church at St. Patrick's, which is still there in El Paso, thought it would be a great idea for the altar boys to go see Rosemary's Baby for Easter. <laughs> uh, Were you one of the kids they predicted would never uh, amount to anything? I'm surprised I'm not a psycho killer, I mean, with that kind of background. <laughs> well, well, uh, I, I guess I am in a way. I mean, you know, you have to be slightly neurotic and slightly paranoid and slightly crazy to work as a, uh, anywhere in film. As a writer, you have to be schizophrenic because that's the only way you can write characters. So that was probably really good training for me, so I don't resent all those Snuggies in the altar boys it changing could, room. It could explain the Santeros on the wall. On it can some indeed. Level. It can, I'm a, you know, a, a proudly lapsed Catholic. Yeah. So, well, thanks for spending time with us and for supporting New Mexico Film and for living here and being an accomplished guy and contributing something. Uh, anything else <laughs> I can thank you? Oh, for. good. I should just bring you around as the Toastmaster <laughs> to all these appearances. I'll pre-record it for you. Yeah. And thank you, Kirk Ellis, and I am Bridget Kelly, and you are...